G'day chaps, so I'm going to go about to trying to show you how I do my desert bases. So the bases turn up just after I finish the last video. Um, so I've gone right ahead and glued everyone to bases. And what I've done is, as you can see, I've tried to spread them out a bit and make it look like there's quite a bit of movement on the bases. Oops. Right, so what I'll do now is I will tidy up the workbench and we'll begin. Okay, so first thing we want to do is I'm going to use German Camo Orange Ochre. Uh, any kind of yellowy, darky, yellowy colour will do. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to place this on the base where we want the dry riverbed look to be. Uh, now I've laboured all these. So A, 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 these are all A's. So I know that these will go together. Just gonna plop a bit of that on there. Like that. I don't wanna get it on the edges. And then on this base, we'll carry that across. So it goes onto here. We'll go across something like that. And then we'll just paint that bit in with the Orange Joker. Might need a couple of coats because it will soak into the MDF. So we'll just put the first one on, allow that to dry, and then I'll put another coat on. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the bases with this first. So, done that on the bases now. You can see where they kind of marry up there. Um, I had to put three coats of paint on in the end because it soaked into the MDF. Uh, I mean, I could have primed the whole base first with PVA and that would have stopped that, but I was worried about it warping, so that's why I didn't do that. Uh, in case anyone's wondering, these bases are 75 wide, 60 deep. Uh, and I've done them in units of nine, but of course you could just add a base. And then you've got units of 12. But for my purposes, nine's enough. So, next thing we're going to do now is add the filler or spackle. So for the filler, we're just going to use this multi-purpose house filler. That gloopy stuff, pre-mixed, so you can mess around mixing it. And I'm going to get my trusty spoon. Blow a little bit into there. Got oh, quite a few bases to do, so we'll up and close it a little bit more. I'll do. And then what we'll do is we'll get some paint. We'll pop that in one second. So I'm just going to mix in some yellow ochre. Uh, I would advise to get a tester pot really because it'd be a lot cheaper than using this. Uh, and I'm just going to mix all that together now. Okie dokie, so I've mixed that up, probably mixed more than I need actually, but it gives me a nice deserty base to work from. I'm going to use my spoon. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply this filler all over this base, trying to avoid getting it on the horse as much as possible, but I always tend to make a mess of that. Um, so we want to hide these base edges. And we're going to try and avoid all the areas where we put the German camo orange ochre. Don't worry if you go over it a bit, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. But most thing, main thing we want to do is try and fill all these gaps, put a little bit on the base as well, because you want some undulation on these bases when you do dry brushing. Okay, so I'm going to carry on do the rest of this off camera because it's a lot easier to do it without a camera in the way. Basically you get the general idea. We just put in this filler all over everywhere. Oops. <laughs> just so we lose them base edges and leaving them areas clear. I'll show you when I've done this one. Okie dokie. So that's our base with all the filler on it. And as you can see, I've left little gaps with the 
you know, ochre shine through. This is not going to be the finished colour of these bases. I've just mixed that in so that if ever in the future I get any breakages, it won't be pure white underneath. And as I say, when I get it on the horses, which I tend to do a lot because I'm a bit ham-fisted, um, it won't look too out of place rather than just pure white. Right, now what I need to do is crack on and do all the others. Excuse shaky cam for a moment. So as you can see, I've done them all. Um, and I've just gone back over the paint with the uh, German camo orange ochre. Just tied them areas up so I can see what I'm doing. And then all I did around these edges, got me a spoon and I just scraped the filler off them areas give me them defined edges. Right, so next up, the growing earth. So I nearly forgot, uh, and this is actually quite important. What you want to do is on these areas that you've got paint on, you want to put some varnish on. I'm using anti-shine matte varnish. And you want to water this down so it's really thin like this consistency, maybe a skim milk or something. You're going to have to put a couple of coats of this on. Uh, and just put that all over them areas that you've painted. And what you're doing there is you're just putting a barrier between all this MDF and the Agrelin Earth when you put that on. Uh, because the Agrelin Earth is pretty much designed to work on plastic. So if you put it onto MDF, it will flake up a lot easier. Uh, and you'll end up having to scrape it all off and start again. Which, incidentally, is what I've just done. Um, yeah, you can probably see the texture on there is pretty rough now. And um, that's because I had to scrape all the adrenal nerf off. Because it was just flaking off anyway, so it would have come off. So we're going to put this matte varnish down. We're going to paint it on all of them. We're going to leave that to dry for a couple of hours and then we're going to come back and do it again. Um, and then we're going to leave that overnight to dry before we attempt to put the Agrella Nerf on this time. That should work because that's what I did with this one. And we've got the very nice breakages, but I didn't do it. For some reason I forgot to put the varnish on. Don't know why. But the result was disastrous. So, as I said, I've scraped it all off, starting again. Let's get this varnish done. Okay, so next thing you want to do, you want to get some of this technical paint from GW, a Grelin Earth, and this will give you your dry riverbed look. So make sure you give it a good shake. Uh, and I'm just going to use this straight out of the pot. Get a big old brush. Oh, bring it good start. Start with this little one, I can do it on camera. And you just blob this on here quite thick. Now the thicker you put it on, the bigger your cracks will be. If you put it on thin, you get little thin cracks. Uh, you put it on too thick and it will just not dry properly. It might even flake up and come off the base. So you want to put it on there and then just move it about with your brush. So you've got a, I don't know, maybe a mil, mil and a half thick. And then just leave it. Uh, now the thicker you put it on, the longer it will take to dry. But if you want them big cracks in the ground, then you've got to put it on quite thick. Otherwise you won't get them. So I'll just blob it on there. And you're going to do this on all of the bases. Oh, I might have got a bit too much on there. Oh, right. So just have a look. So it's probably a little bit thick over here. So we'll just move that across a bit. Well, it's some bits thicker than others anyway. Because it will give you big cracks and little cracks. So they say the drying time on this is about an hour, maybe two or three hours if you put it on thick. Me personally, I'm gonna leave this overnight now. 
uh, and I won't play with it again till tomorrow. And then we'll have a look what it's like when it's all dry. I've got to wait for the filler to dry in any case. So I'm going to leave this overnight and we'll have a look in the morning. So I've left this to dry and this is the rectified versions. Now, obviously it's the wrong color. So we're going to get some yellow ochre. I'm going to paint over everything. Uh, and again, if you've had the good sense to go and get a tester pot made up, it will save you a bit of money. So we're just going to paint over all of these, all of the weight sand and all the base as well. Um, so I need to do that on every one of them now. And then we're going to wait for that to really thoroughly dry. Uh, and then we're going to give it a dry brush. But we have to make sure it's completely dry before we do that. Everything thoroughly dry. And what we're going to do now is we're going to dry brush all this with uh, skeleton bone. That's what I'm going to use. You could use Iraqi sand if you've got that or any kind of bone colour. And we're going to do quite a heavy overbrush of this to tone down this yellow. It's a bit leery but we do want a bit of it still showing through so we're just going to overbrush so you can see how that's coming up and we'll do the whole base like this you might need to add a little bit more paint as you go we just want to get rid of most of that bright orangey yellow color Right, so I'll crack on with all of them. So the final dry brush, we're going to use Vallejo Off-White. And this time we are actually going to dry brush this on quite lightly. Because we just want it to pick out some of the raised edges and that's it. And it will just give a bit more depth to the whole base. Uh, just a, a light dry brush over everything. Don't worry about too much about getting under, under the horses themselves because there'd be shadow there anyway. So that's the final dry brush. A little bit more there, I think. There we go. I'll do them all. One last bit of painting to do on these, and I'm going to use this. German cavalry black brown, but any dark brown will do. Uh, and I'm just going to paint the edges of the bases where I've failed to keep them clean through the process. And I'm just going to use the side of the brush and run it all along there uh, and tidy up all the edges. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could actually just leave these here as done if you wanted a really arid, dry look. Uh, and I just paint the edges just so it neatens them up. Uh, now, I would have applied to rocks these as well, but I couldn't find them. But if you're going to apply the rocks, put them on when you put the filler on. Put a dab of PVA where you want the rocks to be. Push them in a little bit, and then that will seal them in place. Then when you come to the dry brushing of the rocks, dry brush them a bit heavier with the white. And that should give you some nice rocks on there as well but i couldn't find mine which is why i haven't done them but i'm going to add a bit more to these um because i can uh, because they're my toys and i can do what i want with them <laughs> um so i'm just going to put some mediterranean geeks gaming scenics mediterranean soil mix on here not all over just in certain areas uh, just add a bit more contrast to the bases and we'll just blob some PVA glue on in certain areas like this. Not too much, just a little bit. Just to add a bit of interest. Well, that's a general idea anyway. Alright, so we've got that on there. Bones playing up today. Uh, yeah, so Geek Gaming Scenics Mediterranean Soil Mix, which is this one. 
and I'm just going to pop this in here and there are actually a few little rocks and bits and pieces so I'll try and get some of them on and we're just going to sprinkle that all over just for up a PVA glue really turn it around a bit I can done this better can I you get the general idea. We're just sprinkling that on in them areas. And then give that a few seconds to dry. While you're waiting for that to dry, start the next one. So with that done, it just gives a subtle difference. A little bit of different color here and there and a little bit of, a tiny bit of green. I can't really see the white has gone terrible today. Uh, we'll crack on for a moment. If not, I'll have to try again later on today but what I'm going to do I've just got this base out because I've got these from Tajima Tufts Desert uh, so they're like little diorama things they are self adhesive I'll just pull this little one out I'm going to save most of these for command bases because they are quite expensive uh, but they are lovely so I'm just going to pop one on this corner here should really put the Geek Gaming Cine stuff on first, but never mind. Uh, so as you can see, it just really does give a lift to them bases. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of these dead grass with my tweezers. Pop them into... These are self deep as well, but I found they do come off if you don't PVA them for some reason. Uh, and we're just going to pop that on the front of there for now uh, and I'll I'll pop a couple of these on not too many because I do still want it to look deserty but I'm going to put a few of them on okay so that's it that's how I do my desert bases uh, I know I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea because I've put too much vegetation on but I like them that way just adds a bit more interest to the base So that's that. Uh, so the next time you see these, I will have added all the flags and things, and I'm gonna have to have a marathon day adding flags. Uh, yeah, but we'll uh, we'll do that later. So anyway, hope that was helpful to some people, um, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.